Hello, I'm Adam, producer on Rare Replay. And I'm Chris, designer on Rare Replay. And we're here today looking at Blast Core, which was originally released in... 1997. Correct. So we'll be walking you guys through the game, showing you some little tips and tricks, ways to get the most out of the vehicles in the game, which will hopefully help you get further. So what time is it? It's time to get moving. And I've been struggling to kind of get to completion, you know, maybe 3% down on destroying all the buildings. On all the buildings? On all the buildings. So you've gone around, you smashed all the buildings. Yet still, I don't get quite to 100%. Right, well that's because the stuff you have to destroy isn't necessarily buildings. Okay, Dr. So. Chris, give me a prescription. <laughs> a prescription of destruction. Yes. We all know about the great big skyscrapers that we're going to smash. You also want to keep a lookout for things like You'll see these shining lights on the top of the bridge. Yep. Those actually contribute to oh, they... your demolishing score. You'll sometimes see little sneaky things. So you can see a shadow under there, I a can. little glinty shiny ball. Uh -huh. You can uh, ram, oh. ram into that as well. There's one more, particularly devious one as well. You'll see the little ballista here and you'll get into that, pick up the missiles. With the ballista, if we head over this bridge, we will see one of these boats. So what people don't realise is the boat is not just scenery. This will also count towards your destruction. Uh -huh. So if I just uh, rotate the camera a little, you just rotate the camera with the right stick. You can destroy the boat and that will help chip away towards your destruction level. Mm. That was a prescription for destruction. As always. So you might want to revisit those levels that you're struggling with. Definitely. See if you can find any of those. I'm going to come running into the office with 100% and you'll be so proud. I will be proud. You'll cry. So let's uh, have a look at Havoc District. Mm -hmm. And what's good about Havoc District? What can you teach us here? Havoc District is a pretty cool level just because there's a fair few vehicles you can switch between in this level. Get into the J-bomb and away you go. The way you're heading is now. So we'll out see. To see. Oh, look at this. What is this? Little, what little is tunnel. This? It's a hint of things to come. This little structure here, and within the structure, there's a, a sweet little sporty red car. And you'll see in the ground this little suspicious patch of uh, darker coloured grass. You didn't know this was here. I didn't know this was here. <laughs> oh. Now I do, though, Chris. Now you do. Sporty red number, yep. There's a few uh, RDU lights down here as well, so if you're struggling to find them all in this level, these could be the ones that you're missing. So as you see, we're driving around in this lovely pink number. Once you find it, once you've got into it and driven it around, it is available in all the levels that support this oh. car. It's not very good at destroying buildings. So I see. It's only a little car, a little diddy thing. But it's pretty. Right, we're going to look at time trials now. Yes, we and are. And you're going to give us some crafty little hints on how to do better. There are a couple of nice little tips to help you improve in time trials and get a rocking time. And believe me, I need it. <laughs> As with any good racing game, you can get a boost start. So you just have to time your accelerator press just as the lights turn green. Not like that. Not like that. What? That should have been it. I'm not saying another <laughs> word until we do it. This is a fiasco. There we go. See? There you go, that was quite a hefty start you got then. You might be tempted to stick to roads, but you actually want to take crafty shortcuts. You can actually get over the grass without slowing down if you take your finger off the accelerator and you maintain your speed. Safety first. Safety first, everyone. Anything else hidden or sneaky that anyone should be aware of in this level? Communication points can appear hidden in these little time trial mini game ah. levels as well. Through this wall, which is not a wall, if memory serves me correctly. Oh, it's like the labyrinth. Look at that. I didn't know that. Genuinely. <laughs> So now we are in Argent Towers because there's so much hidden stuff. Oh really? It's pretty elaborate in fact to get some of the vehicles, so... Um, well elaborate! Well first of all, here's a nice communication point to light up. Those will unlock extra minigame style levels. Mm -hmm. The first little mystery thing, it's what is this? That looks like J-Bomb I can see there, feet. But you can't get to it, so there's the first little mystery. <laughs> it's like Murder She Wrote this is. So there's some buildings and this little lower dip in the ground there. 
this little shining light. What is that? Ooh, do not know. I feel like I'm on a sightseeing bus tour. And this block that you can push. And that block has exposed this little pathway here. And we have this TNT here. What do we do with that? Be very careful with it. Be very careful and destroy that door. There is a train, which you can't see, but we can get in that train. If you park up with a light in uh -huh. that corner, you can get out of the train. See? And you find this little police car. The police car's good because it will take us to one of the hidden scientists in the game. That's not the last stop for the train. Oh, really? Oh, no. There's one more stop. You find the ballista. Oh, very nice. With this, we can head back to one of those mystery locations I showed earlier. You will see this little doorway there, and you need to destroy it. Three. We can head to the big feet. Big feet. J-Bomb can get out. You can just stroll on through. This will also allow the player to get the second communication point on this level. So those are the mysteries of Argent Tower revealed. Elaborate. Elaborate. Thunderfist, he's one of the better vehicles in the game in my opinion. He's pretty cool. Shiny metal robot, one arm. I was say, that's a very well pronounced right arm he's got there. He makes the most of his one arm by kind of doing a roll and then punching. So you don't really want to get right next to a building when you use them because it will just kind of forward roll into it mm -hmm. and bounce back. You need a bit of a run up. Thunderfist is on the move. Thunderfist is loose. Feel the magic. Hear the roar. Thunderfist is, is loose. loose. <laughs> so, Ebony Coast. Ebony Coast, yep. Ebony Coast. I don't know if you've noticed when playing this, but there's this little bit at the start where you can blow this tunnel down. All right. Drive down, there's a great big... The big head. Big, like an Easter Island statue uh -huh. head. To get in the train. We do a bit of elevator music or something. Or for the train journey. During this journey, because it's crammed in, stood up, commuting. Hot, sweaty. Hot, sweaty. Especially on the tube. And there's someone coughing and sneezing right next to you. And is that you, that person? We unleash this crate of TNT, which softly, softly, we're going back on the train, are we? This could be a hairy journey back. With that beard. <laughs> Get that bomb next to the Easter Island head. We can destroy history here. And there and we look. go. Lo and behold, we have J-Bomb. Once you've unleashed J-Bomb, you can fly over this great expanse of water and reach areas that you could not reach mm -hmm. before. Once you fly far enough, you will reach an island with a silhouette of a man on it. Scaramouche. Do the Fandango, you'll find a group, a cluster of these Easter Island heads. And yeah. they are worth a hell of a lot. That's the you... collective noun for Easter Island heads. A group, a cluster. A cluster. There you go, you just get massive amounts of money yeah. for each one you smash. There's a lot to get on each level then. There is, absolutely worth playing through each level multiple times to clear them thoroughly. Consider me informed. I'm going to show you how to get the best out of Backlash. Backlash is a tricky vehicle that, unlike the others, you can't just smash through buildings head on. But to get the most out of it, you're going to want to try and drift. To drift, whilst accelerating, hold down the X button, and when you steer, you go into a lovely little power slide. Maximum carning. Car through buildings like a hot knife through butter. There's also another way that some people might not be aware of. You'll see here, there's a little bit of a mound in the ground. If you actually drive over that at pace, your truck will get slightly airborne, and again, that will allow it to smash through buildings a little bit faster. Oh, thank you. That's all right, Adam. Thank you for watching. Hopefully all of Chris's top tips there were insightful and useful. I found them useful. I found them useful as well. Hopefully everyone else did. So you can go away now and put them to use in Rare Replay. So Bascore is on our collection of 30 games. Wonderfully as well, if you want to find out more about Blast Core, what can you do? Well, if you want to find out why Thunderfist only has one arm, for example, you can view a making of Blast Core documentary. So there's plenty of insightful facts, kind of behind the scenes anecdotes, and just how the team actually made the game included in that as well. So you can hear straight from those guys what went into the making of Blast Core back in 
1997. Still got it. So thank you again and keep an eye on this channel for more videos um, about Masterclass and how to play coming soon. Like the boys said, pick up Rare Replay to get Blast Core, 29 other games and a ton of extras. As a taster, why not like and subscribe and check out our recent look back at 12 Tales. Or see our feature showcase for a rapid rundown of reasons to love Rare Replay. Ta-ra!